anymore, honestly, the careers that we all kind of have to choose from today aren't as straightforward as they might have once been. So the reason I bring this up is because I was talking to my older brother and we had gotten on the topic of what does a career look like? What does a career entail? And in today's world, especially, that can mean a wide range of things. It can mean a wide variety of experiences, jobs, titles, some that may not be that may not seem connected whatsoever and others that seem like the natural progression one after the next. So in this week's episode, I want to talk about what the idea of a career actually is, what it means to me, and how we can kind of take this new world that we live in or this new emerging job market and really kind of focus in on finding a career that you love and to trying to find what actually motivates you and drives you to be a part of that career to begin with. Keeping everything simple, let's get started. Welcome back to the Keeping Everything Simple podcast. I'm your host and fellow learner, Michael Klukas. And on this show, we try to boil down complex topics into simple, actionable tips. So for careers, this is something that I have found to be very interesting simply because I'm still in the start of my own. And yeah, I've been out of college for three years now, going on four. And obviously, that's still the start of my career. If I'm looking at like the long time horizon of how many years I'm going to have on this planet, the average of like 4,000 weeks in a human life, I have a bit of time left, but I still want to move with some sense of urgency. I want to be able to find a career that allows me to have a big impact because especially if you're spending more time at work with your coworkers and your boss than some people do with their own family and friends, you kind of really want to work somewhere that you enjoy. And that's not to discredit the whole premise that sometimes a job is just a job. It helps you live your life because, again, and I'll repeat it and I'll continue to repeat it, is that we don't live to work. We work to live. Our jobs tend to be what fund our lives. And now anymore, and this is a conversation that has come up, and there was on Ali Abdal's podcast, The Deep Dive, where he was talking to an author about the swiggly career I'm probably between that, but it was one of the more recent episodes, so I'd recommend go checking it out because it kind of really relates into what also prompted this topic to come up. And anymore, there was originally the fact that careers did kind of lead you along this sense of fulfillment. There was a sense of progression. There was one achievement after the next, and that's something that we all enjoy. We like kind of this achievement of, I've done it, I've reached this point, maybe I'm a senior level now. And on his podcast, on Ali podcast, he was talking about or him and his guests were talking about how for that, it may have been, I got the car, I can now have a house in the suburb, I'm a part of these communities at work, some committees, and then also the community I'm involved in it. But anymore, now there's a lot of segmentation. There's a lot of, I'm on my own, I need to be able to make or break my entire job choice just by myself, and I need to be self-reliant, independent, which... I'm not, you know, ragging on that. I think independence is good. I also think community is good. And for your career, for your jobs, essentially, that's what we had turned to. We had turned to the idea that, you know, your job is going to meet a lot more requirements than initially because of that big shift, because that shift in your job now, you know, not being just something that you used to pay the bills, but being something that you're now looking to for a sense of fulfillment, a sense of purpose that you get to really make that big impact with. And I know there's an organization, 80,000 Hours out there, which focuses on this, knowing that from our jobs, from our working careers, that in of itself can be one of the largest places that we have a chance to make a huge impact on those around us and the world around us. And that makes the idea and the conversation about careers feel really, really, really big. And I think that's also part of what needs to be discussed here. So bringing it back a little bit, what is a career? Now, I didn't bother looking up a definition for this beforehand because I was kind of just going off on a riff here. But for me and for most people that tend to think about it, as so I've seen anyways, is that 
A career is a series of jobs that you hold. And the overarching theme and the overarching direction that you go in becomes your career. Now, you can have one career and you can have multiple jobs within that career. Now, a good example might be, so if I was to use just like a generic, like a Fortune 500, Fortune 100 company. Now, you may have a whole lot of jobs throughout your career there. If you're actually starting out as an entry level team member and you get up to the C level, the executive level suite, then you probably had a lot of jobs within that career. You maybe were originally working out in the mail room and maybe from there your skills and abilities got recognized and you moved up to a different department where now instead of just working in the mail room, you were helping to um, coordinate communications, maybe your communication liaison. And then from there, the communication started to improve. It's like, okay, maybe from there you joined the marketing team because you were really good at persuasion and copywriting. And then maybe from there you got promoted into an executive assistant role where you're helping out an existing C-level executive or C-level suite uh, employee and helping coordinate their communication or their travel and whatever it is. And then as they get ready to retire and step down, maybe they train you to take over for them and to be their replacement. I think that's a pretty reasonable assumption in the grand scheme of these are a bunch of different jobs that all are on still the same path of a career. However, now with how work looks for us today, there's the freelancing, you can make money online, you can do gig work, um, you can hop, you tend to hop jobs a little bit more and there's the now general knowledge, at least I believe it's a bit more general, is that it tends to be a good practice to change jobs every two to three years because that can give you pay raises and benefit changes and also can just help propel you forward in your career. And that has promoted a very different style of holding a career, of creating a career, because it's a lot more self-driven, it's a lot more self-created, and it's less about a predetermined path of you have to start out from the bottom, you are entry level, you're paid pretty poorly sometimes, and instead now you're working your way up into that predetermined spot. So if you want to be a lead, you'll become a lead. If you want to become an executive lead, you'll become an executive. If you want to become a trainer that does coordination and uh, team training for the new leads, you do that. Whatever this kind of progression is, for these existing companies, it's kind of predetermined in some aspect. And that's also not a bad thing. For some people, that route makes a lot of sense. For some, that route still provides the security that they're looking for. It still provides that sense of fulfillment because maybe they truly do love that field. Maybe they truly do love that company they work with and they believe in the mission and they believe in the work that they do. And that's good. So it's not me saying that, oh, this predetermined path is a bad thing. Not at all. Instead, I think it's a recognition that there's a new type of way to look at the career. And I don't think it's actually so much new as it's being brought to the forefront of our conversations a bit more. Because if, say for me right now, a good example is I started out in retail. I was in retail for two years and I got a pretty good feel for it. And I did like it and I had a lot of fun. And then there was a shift that happened and the environment I was in wasn't conducive to the growth that I wanted anymore. And so I made a shift. And then I took a four month sabbatical. And then from there, I went back to retail for a, about a month or two. I think it was a month of my last video on that is to be correct. And I felt bad about it, but it was me testing the waters again. Do I want to actually go back into retail? Do I want to make this another stepping stone in my career? And the ultimate choice and decision was I didn't. So I moved into actually production work and manufacturing. I worked at the same company that my younger brother did, and I was part of a production line, and that's not that's something that I've never done before. I'm working rotating shifts three to four days a week, working 12 hours, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., and that was a new experience, and I got to add that into my list of things that I've done. And that was a great experience. There was a lot of things that I wish obviously could have been done differently, but that's where the learning comes in. I would never know if I didn't try out that job. And now that job is a foundational piece in my career. I can say that I've done it and I know what that takes. And 
that in of itself helped me so much with my current uh, occupation right now as a recruiter. And working for a staffing agency, I'm now able to draw on that experience from retail, I'm able to draw on the experience from working in manufacturing and help people get into similar roles that I used to be in, where I started at. And that's a great way for me to build on the jobs I've had and continuing to further my career. And that's where you join on the connection where it doesn't seem connected for me to go, I'm going to go from stocking the shelves and helping out in the back warehouse to uh, I'm going to manufacture high-end equipment and there's no real crossover there. However, in the third step in my recruitment phase right now, it does have crossover. In fact, those experiences, those jobs have helped further that next step in my career with me working as a recruiter or this so just overall, this idea, I think, has a lot of merit. And then for those who don't fully know where their career is going, I want you to know that that's actually okay. Now, it may not feel okay. And that's something I want to acknowledge is that when you're fresh out of high school, when you're fresh out of college, most people expect you to have some type of answer. What are you going to do next? Where are you going next? Are you going on to graduate school? Do you have a career and a job already lined up? Are you moving to another town, another city? Like, what's next? And for the most part, I can't imagine many graduates are super happy hearing that question over and over again because the idea of you have to know exactly what you're gonna do next exactly where you're gonna go is a lot of pressure to put onto anyone it's so much pressure to ask an 18 year old what are you gonna do with your life and that's also then not to say it's still a lot of pressure for that same question to be put onto a 22 year old who maybe just got out of university or the 23-year-old who took an extra year because they took a gap year to try to find themselves and to learn a bit more about the world and maybe what they wanted to do. Of course, there are people out there that will know. There's people out there that have had an idea for the longest time, but also the idea changes. Like for me, wanting to go into politics as a kid, the idea of becoming president was something that was so fascinating. And then it came time that I grew up a little bit more and I thought, okay, Maybe not the president. I see what they deal with. Maybe the mayor of my hometown. That'd be cool as well. I get to make changes on a local level. I get to see what happens. And then it shifted again to now where I really want to do things like this. I want to host a show, host this podcast. I want to be able to help people find careers. I want to be able to help people be mindful about who they are as an individual and where they want to go and who they want to be in the future. And that's all been a continual process of change. Now, if you asked me at 17 or 18, I turned 18 at the start of my high school or my senior year of high school, and I'm applying for colleges and everyone's asking myself, yeah, so what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. I really don't know. I have ideas. There'd be things in which make sense where I was a part of DECA for every year of high school. And that's a business marketing club. And for me to then say, okay, cool. I actually like this. It's fun. I want to be a business owner in the future. Now, that in of itself is broad. That opens up the huge world of entrepreneurship and what type of business owner would I want to be in the future? What would I actually want to do? Would I want to sell physical products? Would I want to sell services? Um, and this is a question that, again, most people, I think at some point or another, come to loathe being asked just because there's so much weight behind it. And this idea that you have to have your entire career mapped out until you're retired, I don't think is feasible anymore. With the world being so interconnected, with there being so many more opportunities now, then it brings us to this kind of new forefront that your career can largely be determined by you. It can be determined by the path that's already been laid out, or it can be a combination of both. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so I need to read the book, The Squiggly Careers or The Squiggly Path for Jobs. 
I really need to read that because this idea that I really agreed with that the author was talking about was that people tend to think that it needs to be some hard shift left or right of one direction or another to say this is that huge shift in my career. Fantastic. As opposed to saying this is part of the squiggly path that my career is taking and I can see where the lines are connecting. I can see where I'm going to be able to draw on this experience in my next role. I'm going to be I'm going to be able to see how this is going to help me in the future. And I think that does bring up this next question of well, how do you connect your jobs? How do you connect your jobs into this cohesive narrative, this cohesive career? And the one thing I also want to leave you with here is that, or not leave you with here, but to let you know and to assure you is that it doesn't have to be pretty. It truly doesn't. It just has to make sense. And this is, again, keeping it simple in that, okay, what were common denominators? What was something that you really loved at one job, something you really hated? What's something you really loved at the next one and really hated? Is there a common denominator between them? If there's not, dig a little further. What was something that really motivated you at one job? What motivated you at the next one? What made you feel like you were doing a great job? What made you feel like you weren't doing enough? It's these little questions in which if you're asking them, I think in the right way and at the right time, that will let you see a bit more of the common denominator between what really matters to you in a job. How does that impact your choices and the decisions you make throughout your career? So for me, it's just understanding now that team and culture is so, so important to me. Like, I almost feel like it's absurdly important to me because I had a fantastic team for my first quote unquote real world job when I went to retail right after I graduated university and still being 20, I'm thinking, all right, cool. This is a good start. I have a team that is so fun to work with. I enjoy what I do. Um, I'm in a fast paced area. I'm consistently helping people out. This is great. It's a good combination of stuff. And then that transition into the promotion as well. Like I had a good team. I got to help people out and I got to do a lot of training for people. I was like, okay, cool. That one's a bit new because I'm not just doing, you know, customer service. I'm helping people grow and develop a bit more and plan that out. And that was exciting. Move over to my manufacturing job. And from there, it's me thinking, okay, cool. The team is very interactive and I enjoy their company. That's important for me. The work itself is new and novel and that is something that I look for is that novelty and make sure that no two days always feel exactly the same and that I'm actually learning something new consistently because if I'm not learning something, this is a bit more of an extreme, but if you're not growing, you're dying. And that again is an extreme, but it's something that makes sense to me of I want to continue to grow, learn and develop because if I don't, what else am I missing? What could I be missing on if I'm not continuing following that passion and that purpose? And then that brings me into the next role I'm in today of, hey, I have a good team. The team is so supportive and they help me out. I'm learning a lot every single day, not just because it's a new role and a new job that I'm in that I've never been in before, but also for the fact that every single day there's something new. There's days of high stress. There's days in which it's kind of slow, but it varies. I'm learning something new every single day. I'm getting to work with a team that loves to laugh, have a good time, and at the end of the day, still get our work done. And there's a lot of things that I can learn in the future, not just related to the business and the role. And that for me is a fantastic combination. And again, for yourself, I do want to encourage you to ask that question. Ask multiple questions of yourself. What was it that made you apply for the first job aside from, you know, just paying the bills. But what was it that really made you think, you know what, that'd be a good job. That's somewhere I'd want to work right now. Was it, do you like that brand a lot to begin with? Was it, you had a friend work there and they told you, this is actually what it's like. And it's actually pretty fun. Was it, Hey, this is actually a high paying job and doesn't require a whole lot of experience. Whatever the case may be, ask yourself what drew you to that job. Same vein, what draws you to the next one and the next one after that? And just truly look for that common denominator between them because 
it gets much easier to see those connected lines if you're continuing to look for them. If you're continuing to train your mind to say, okay, the job may be vastly different than what I did before, but some parts, no matter what job you're in, will be the same. Whether it's the values that you're holding, the principles that you want to develop, or just the things that truly motivate you to do your best and reach your best. Because ultimately, I don't think that the career, the whole conversation and topic about around careers needs to be as difficult or as overwhelming. And I know, granted, that no matter what, it's going to feel overwhelming because there's just so much that goes into it. There's so many decisions that you can make in there. I still do think that there is a lot of room for simplifying it down to what are the common denominators through your jobs. And from there, how are you pursuing that? Because this idea that anymore that your job now has to satisfy multiple roles in your life, not just a source of income and a means of growth and performance, it's also then a place of fulfillment. It's a place of social interactions. It's a place of community. And as a whole, that's putting a lot of hats on what a job is. And I think recognizing that this is kind of how we're starting to look at work, how we're starting to look at careers is going to help frame this conversation to be a bit more, I think, beneficial because it's less of this idea that you're a cog in the machine. You have to go to work. You have to put in your hours and then you go home at the end of the day, you eat, you go to sleep, you repeat the same thing. I think instead this conversation of how does this job enrich my life is good. I think how does this job actually motivate me to be a better person is great. And how am I using this job to not only positively impact my life, but positively impact those around me, everyone I work with? Because the idea of if you even make one person's day better, you've changed the world in some capacity is phenomenal. And I think, again, this could be just the route in which careers go down. And I believe it's a route that they should go down because having a career that you build or having one that you follow that's pre-existing, but using that philosophy of common denominators, using that philosophy of what are the simple things that really make me want to do this job will help you determine what actually makes a good career for you. Ultimately, I don't want you to feel like you just have to take a job to get a job. And then you wind up 20 years down the line, 30 years down the line, wondering where your life went wrong, where your life got derailed and completely left your control. What I want for you and for your career is for you to say, this is exactly where I wanted to go. But I'm also going to put this out there. It may not exactly be what you pictured the more you explore the more you experiment the more you really put yourself out there that is when i think that magic truly happens in which you're able to look at your career look back on it and say okay hindsight being 2020 i can actually truly see where these dots were connected how my path that seemed so all over the place actually got me to where i am today and I think that should be the mode in which you actually take gratification. You actually take pride in the fact that your career may have been all over the place. It may have felt all over the place, but where you've ended up was a result of the choices you made and the jobs that you took. And this is where the piece of advice comes in of, you know, what truly is your first job? Because that doesn't obviously determine the route of your career, but it's what you learn that helps determine the route of your career. And this is where, like, on my first million, there's so many people that go on the show or on the podcast and recommend that, you know, get a job at a startup. You'll learn so much more about business there or do it at a small mom and pop shop because you're having your hands and everything. You're really learning the ropes as opposed to going to, like, Microsoft or, you know, Amazon where there's predefined roles and the chances for growth exist. They're there. However, it's a lot more predefined and there's a lot less nuance in what will actually be done. So 
don't let yourself be limited by this idea that you have to choose one route. Don't let yourself be limited by this idea that you only have one choice and it has to be the predetermined set path. I understand and I recognize that for, you know, us here in America, there's a lot of flexibility in that. But then also I know there's plenty of jokes about it where other countries around the world, it's you're either a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer. And having this kind of premise that there is freedom to explore, freedom to learn, because the more you learn, the better you will have the ability to make a decision that means the most to you. So while this may feel overwhelming, and while at times it truly will be, I encourage you to remember the fact that if you're looking for the common denominators throughout the jobs you've held, you'll be able to find, I believe, a better direction that you want your career to grow in. You'll be able to find what that career could mean for you, and you'll be able to grasp how you can take that next step to get there. Thank you all very much for watching or listening to this episode of the Keeping Everything Simple podcast. If you like this video on YouTube, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to give this uh, podcast a rating on your favorite podcast app of choice, especially on the iTunes store. It helps other people discover the show and again, helps us out so, so much. And let me know in the comments below, what does your career look like for you? Where do you feel your career is going? I really want to know if you guys feel more comfortable on the developing path or the one that already exists. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And with that, keeping everything simple, have an amazing day, you amazing people, and I will see you all in the next episode. Go out there and do great things.